Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part five of my Accounts Payable series. If you haven't watched parts one through four yet, go watch those. You'll find links down below and then come on back. Okay, now we get to the part of the database that I always save for last. I always do my reporting last. I like to get the tables, the queries, and the forms, all of that done, get everything working. And then once I'm happy with the workflow, then I worry about the reports. It's weird because I usually use reports as my blueprint for building the database in the first place because I, I see the output that the client wants. Oh, and okay, now we need to build the database to do it this way to, go, to collect the information to make that report. So even though I always start with reports as far as for planning the database, they're usually the last thing that I build once all you know the forms and everything are, are all done. So we've got our payables query that we built in the last class, and we've got each payee ID. Uh, the pay date should definitely be null because it's not paid. And then we've got what's past due, due in seven, due in 30, and over 30. You can change these if you want to, make it less than 30, you know, 30 to 60, 60 to 90, over 90, whatever. One thing we will need in here, I'm gonna add in the payee's name. So I'm gonna add in that payee queue that we created earlier. Now remember, payee ID is the same as customer ID. So we'll make that join manually. That's called an ad hoc join because it's not a, a system relationship. And we shouldn't have to worry about this join type because everybody over here should have a matching record over there unless you allow your users to put in items in the bill table without a payee ID. Some of my clients like to do that. They just want to be able to type in, you know, petty cash or miscellaneous, whatever. And to which I say, we'll make that a payee. Anything that should that, that you can send money to or that you get money from should be a payee in your system or a customer in your system or whatever. All right, so here we're going to add payee name. And if we take a look now, we just get that. All right, now this is all we need to create our report. So save that, close it. Now in my blank database template, I got a blank report here. It's just got the margins and everything all set up the way that I like it. So I'm gonna copy and paste this guy. Copy, paste. This will be my payables report. All right, design view. Now I got this group and uh, group sort and total on. I'm gonna just shut that off for just a minute. Uh, reports are one of the only things I like to work on maximized. I don't know, it's just easier. First thing, we're gonna open up the report properties and we're gonna to go to data and we're gonna bind this report to that payables queue. That's where you get your, your records from, your data from, right? The record source. Now that I've done that, I can go to the report design and add existing fields. All right, there they are. Now, what do we need over here? Well, let's just bring everything in from now. Click, shift click, click and drag, drop everybody there. We can get rid of this guy. All right, so there's each record in here. All right, let's take a peek at what it looks like. Let's save it. And I got print preview right up here on my quick launch toolbar. I'm going to click on that. And okay, there we go. There's each record. All right, kind of boring. Close that. What I want is to have that columnar view. Columnar, columnar, however you want to pronounce it, right? So we're going to do it so it goes across. Okay, now I am gonna get rid of these labels. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of all but one label. Delete, and I'm gonna take this guy, and we're gonna put it above everybody else. Now I got a report header and a page header, which I'm gonna just close these up for now. We don't need these at the moment. But I wanna group these based on the payee ID. All right, so we're gonna turn a grouping level on. If you're not familiar with grouping and sorting levels, go watch this video. All right, so let's go back into report design and turn that group and sort back on that I turned off a minute ago. It's okay, it's fine, it's okay. <laughs> All right, we're gonna add a group. We're gonna group it on payee ID. You might be thinking to group it on payee name, but I always like to group on the ID and then sort it on the name. Because if you do happen to have two payee names that are identical, they'll all get grouped together. So try not to group on text like that. Always group on your IDs. Okay, and we do want a footer for this group. So come over here and pick with a footer section. All right, there's the payee ID footer. 
And then we're gonna add a sort after that based on payee name. So inside that group, they'll be sorted by payee name, okay? In fact, now that I think about it, that's backwards, right? You wanna sort by the name, but inside that name, you wanna have it grouped on payees in case you do have two, you know, AAA insurance, you want them grouped separately by the ID, but we want it sorted by name first. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna come over here, click on this little up arrow, boop, that'll move the sort above the grouping, and that's fine, okay? So we're gonna sort on all the payees first, and then inside of that, we're gonna group on their ID, just in case you get two identical payee names. All right, now let's take this payee ID, and I'm going to cut that label off it and put it in the payee ID header. And we're just gonna change that to say payee ID, and we're gonna make it so we can actually read it. So we're gonna to go to format, and go to black, standard black, and turn off the stupid borders that come around the shapes, in fact, I'm going to do that while I'm thinking about it with all of these guys too. Format, shape outline, transparent. I hate those borders. All right. And then under the payee, we're going to put the payee name, but in, let's see here, in the header. In fact, let's do this. We don't even really need that label. We're going to save it for these guys. Let's put the payee name up here. And I'm going to bold it, control B, and make this a little bit bigger. All right. Now, do we need the payee ID in here? No, not really. Unless, like I said, you've got duplicate payees, then you can display the ID so you know which one's which. Um, in that case, I don't like showing auto numbers. I like making my own type of counter or unique customer ID or whatever you want. That's not an auto number. I got another whole video on that. I generally don't like showing my auto numbers in my final databases. I use them for training purposes to teach beginners you know, their importance. But when it comes down to a, a finished product, I generally like to hide them. I create my own customer code. And this video explains that in more detail. So no, we generally don't need the ID in here. All right, pay date's always gonna be null, so we don't need that. All right, and then we got pass due, due in seven, due in 30, and then over 30 right there. Okay, now I like all of my uh, columns to be left aligned. That's just me. It's a personal preference. If you don't want to do that, don't do it. But that's just, I think it looks better. All right. So now I'm going to take this label and we're just going to use this one label for all of these fields. It's okay. And we just come in here and go past do and then a bunch of spaces. Do in seven, a bunch of spaces. Do in 30, a bunch of spaces and over 30. Okay. And you could do whatever you want formatting for this italicize it around. All right, we don't need this much space in the detail section, so we're gonna click here and drag that all the way up. All right, save it, and let's get a good print preview. Where are you? There you are. Okay, looking a lot better. Now, I don't like the alternating colors that you always get with groups. In fact, I turned them off in my, my template blank for the detail section and the regular headers, but when you create a new header, a new grouping section like that, it gives it back to you. I can't stand that. So I'm gonna open up the properties for the payee ID header, go to format and set the alternate color to no color right there. And I do want the background color for the header itself to be a light gray. So we're gonna go maybe there. Okay, and then the same thing for the footer, we're just gonna change that guy to no color. That's my preference, that's what I like to do. Save it, print preview it, and that looks so much better. Oh, and you'll see this here, how that's all white. That's because this text box has a white background. All we gotta do is make that transparent. So click on this guy. You can see how you can't see the grid dots behind it, right? Click on that guy, go to format, and then go to shape fill, and then go transparent. And there you go. All right, one more check. Oh, looks beautiful, looks beautiful. It's coming right along. It's looking pretty good. How about some totals, right? We're gonna do some totals for each client. We'll do some totals for everybody. So you could say, okay, I got this much money total that I have to pay out in 30 days or less or seven days or less. And then we'll do a total this way so you could see the total for each of the customers going across this way too. And we will tackle all of that 
in tomorrow's class. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel, or if you're a member, you can watch it right now. And if you're impatient and you don't feel like becoming a member, which you should, go watch this video. It's called Form Flare Totals. It's basically the same thing we're going to be doing. This works in forms. It's basically the same as in reports. And I'm going to show you a couple, well, one more trick. But this, this will get you started. So there you go. There is your tech help video for today. That's part five. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part six. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.